What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades and today we're going to revisit an old favorite of mine from my small, small collection. Uh, you know guys, I'm not, I don't have the mindset to have a huge knife collection so what stays in my collection has impacted me in sort of a specific or special way and this knife um, it exemplifies the reason a knife is in my collection. And what we've got here is a Boker Plus um, Lucas Burnley designed Quiken folder. It's a flipper folder. This is a pattern uh, designed by Lucas Burnley. One of my favorite Quiken top designs ever. Hands down. It probably is my favorite. It, it probably is my favorite. But Boker Plus has made these under license to Lucas Burnley for, I don't even know, maybe a decade already. And they've now made numerous different versions. This is a full-size version. It is a Blade HQ exclusive. And no, they do not have any. They have been sold out for well over a year. They were an exclusive. I think they just did one or two runs I think one run of full size, one run of minis, and that was it. Um, and this knife, just for shits and giggles, it went for $149. Well, what do you get for $149 from a Blade HQ exclusive, Boker Plus, and Lucas Burnley? Uh, you get a three and a half inch blade of VG10, which is a upper mid-range steel. It is. It is uh, right below your S30V. It's in the same range as 154 CM, sort of. And um, uh, it's actually, is I think it is a Hitachi steel. It's a Japanese steel. I could be wrong about that. I apologize if I am. But um, it's in VG10, three and a half inch blade. You have copper bolsters, marbled carbon fiber scales, copper backspacer uh, the blade and the frame or a black wash they called it smoke wash but it is a it is a black stone wash finish very well done uh, just the perfect amount of stone wash after the finish was applied it has crisply broken all of the the crisp edges of the grind but there's still plenty of darkness in the blade but with the surface finishing and texture of a stone wash just the perfect perfect level of that it also follows over to the frame it is a steel liner lock and the more astute of you are thinking right now damn bazon blades a steel liner lock with all that copper on it in a three and a half inch blade. How much does that knife weigh? I am, I, I got to tell you guys, it, I'm, I'm shaking right now. Look at me shaking. I'm holding this knife up. It's so, oh God, there's a cramp. Oh, okay. It's not that heavy. It is five and a half ounces. It is, um, I'm going to be honest with you. When you pick this knife up, a very slim profile, very slim, gentlemanly like profile, uh, in a full-size package, easy to carry. Um, it feels a little heavy. <laughs> it feels a little heavy. I'm not going to shit you guys. It's a little heavy for its size, but you've got three big chunks of copper mixed in there with a pretty substantial thickness-wise um, steel liner lock. So they've not cut any corners as far as making this uh, what is a slender gentlemanly design a uh, steel hefty feeling in this example and I have owned other uh, Quiken folders I did own uh, a carbon fiber version and it was much lighter of course uh, but it still it had a good feeling and I think a lot of that is they're using the thick steel liners they give a lot of structural rigidity in this width of a piece could you imagine as thick as that liner is the force it would take to twist that liner in just that size uh, it would take quite a bit of force more force than you're going to put on a knife like this so it does it tends to uh, feel fairly substantial in all different versions 
the added weight here uh, is just it just adds to that it is not a lightweight edc blade and you know what i don't think that the design is suited as an edc either because i think that it is poetic almost it is the flow of this quiken design i think it's as good a profile of a quiken design as you will find out there. There are much more stylized, modernized Quikens. There's much more traditional cord wrapped, like fixed blade Quikens of, Lucas has a design with Columbia River Knife and Tool, CRKT, and that is the Obake. He has multiple designs with them, actually guys, like four different um, Asian inspired cord wrapped handle designs and then a few other designs I believe uh, congratulations to him on that but um, it's just it is a very um, pleasing balance of a traditional uh, blade to handle relationship a traditional uh, blade profile for a small quiken, a personal knife that would have been carried. Um, I believe mostly upper middle and upper class would have carried a quiken. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on it. I'm not a history major. I'm just a knife nut, and I'm only 50 years old. And and quikens were carried like uh, I don't know, 800, 1,000 years ago, 500 years ago. Um, 51 years ago, I wouldn't know about it. I'm just 50. So there you go. Um, but I wanted to show this knife, guys. Let's not get too deep into it and make this too awful long. I wanted to show the copper, but I'm looking through the camera and I am not, with my studio lighting, I'm not getting the colors on the camera that I'm seeing in real life. I see a lot on this backspacer, a lot of purple um, it's, a, it's almost like a surface oxidation, which is what, of course, it is. It's patinane, but these are more polished finish. You can see how smooth of a finish is on these, and maybe you're getting some of that. Up on the bolsters, I get a lot of purple, blue, and a little bit of green, depending on how the light hits it. Um, a more stronger purple and a little bit of blue on the backspacer here. Uh, it is f aging very well. It is aging very well, and it's a beautiful knife to look at. The Boker Plus manufactured Lucas Burnley designed Quiken folder. Now, uh, you guys that have this knife, you know what I'm saying. If you have this knife, you're probably a big fan of the Quiken design anyway, and you know that this knife designed by Lucas Burnley is a standard setter in that design niche. This is a standard setter within the Quiken design niche. Uh, go to your favorite custom maker that makes a Quiken and ask him his opinion on Lucas's Quiken design and I guarantee he's going to have a very positive opinion uh, of this design. It is, it is an industry standard for this type of design, the Quiken design. Beautiful, beautiful knife. I'm so glad that I spent the money on this knife. Um, you know, Quikens are a, they're a funny knife for me. Like I said, I've owned two. Uh, neither one of them was the best flipper. They don't have, in my two instances, they don't have a super strong detent. This one's got a decent detent. It is not an enjoyable detent, but it is mechanically a decent detent. Um, uh, plenty enough to rocket this blade out. Uh, the flipper tab design on the Quiken is very minimal in my opinion. It's a little wider of a design, but as far as the amount that it stands off, it's minimal and it has an organic shape. The forward part is rounded, it is radius, and it is jimped. And the jimping is, it helps, it helps. Um, it's not super aggressive, and I wouldn't want it super aggressive on a, a sort of a gentleman's carry knife. Um, this one, the D10 is decent, like I say. 
Um, the centering is good. Look at that. They don't give much room, guys. You go and you pull out your spider codes, your zero tolerances, your riates, all of those knives, and look at them and see if they are built with this little clearance between the width of the blade, the thickness of the blade, and the liners. That is not very much clearance at all in a $149 Asian-made, mass-produced production knife. That is insane. So props to everybody in the facility that makes this knife. That is absolutely crazy. And the centering is right on there. Um, there is just... Look at the clearance between the blade and the liners. That is insane. If I was making folders in my shop, if I knew how and could, um, I would not attempt that. I would not attempt, especially with the equipment I have. There's no way I could guarantee um, a precision enough degree of flatness to get a result like that. Uh, that's, that's crazy at $149 with a decent blade steel and nice accoutrement, you know, a nice outfit and nice furniture on there for you AR guys. Um, you know what? This is, a, it's a sort of a little hot rod attention getter of a knife. Um, yeah, it's not the best flipper in the world, but uh, who gives a rat's ass? It's a decent flipper and it looks like this. And the design is like, you know, and yeah, I mean, the material, look at that carbon fiber. That's crazy. It's got a satin finish on it. The joiner between the, uh, the scales here and the copper bolsters is very tight. No, it's not custom fitting. Um, it is not custom fitting, and you can see that the edges are radiused uh, to give it that look, the joiner look, rather than a flush meeting. And this is a little easier to do in a production knife. Uh, it doesn't require the amount of hand fitting to flush all of that. Uh, you see fitting like that used um, in the, um, uh, oh my goodness, the lion still made slip joints uh, with the titanium liners and and all of that, how they fit the stuff together. It's not the classic uh, precision hand fit. Everything's finished in a radius to where it can be, it could be uh, modular. It could be modular. You could take mixed up parts and put them together and they will fit with CNC precision. Uh, that's the type of fit it has. Uh, the hardware is uh, of course Torx dome head stuff that's inset. It is fully inset, uh, domed front pivot um, that's plain. You got T8 uh, single side adjustment pivot. T6 is in. Um, I think a very attractive pocket clip. Now I could personally do without a lanyard hole and move this all the way up to the end. That would be perfect for me. Uh, maybe come into the backspacer and do a through like this, a sort of a hidden lanyard attachment point, and you could get both done in this design. Uh, it would add another machining phase on that backspacer, and it would uh, add adjustment in the machining of the scale, whatever the scale material on the particular uh, version that you get. But I think that would be a, a the really the only improvement. Um, crap i mean what are you going to improve on this yeah you could put m390 and do a you know premium handled on a titanium i wouldn't want a liner lock then because you don't have any room for a hardened steel insert on a liner lock um but you could go to a frame lock i honestly i'm i'm just not feeling this design in a frame lock i like the covered design um, I like the uh, wide spectrum of materials that have been used from different carbon fibers uh, to different micartas to titanium um, 
to your cup or there's a version with a micarta that's got bronze or brass, brass, brass on it um, with a linen micarta, I think. I think it's linen. Uh, it's, of course, also sold out. It was a sprint run at Blade HQ. But um, I, I like the covers. It does give a chance to do all that. And you know what? Um, I like frame locks. But uh, knife manufacturers have gotten so precise on liner locks that the issues we had in liner locks um, in the 90s, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, the reason that we went from liner locks to frame locks is it, it's much less of a difference now. And especially in a steel liner lock, um, this one could use, you know, it's a little bit of weight relief or something, which it does not have there, guys. You can see there is no milling out of those, um, those uh, liners. There's, there's no milling out of them. It could use some weight reduction um, in this version. In some other versions, it's not that much of an issue. Um, let's see. I mean, what do you guys think about this? That's a... It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, I wouldn't call it a tactical knife. I, if I have something that I'm going to have to do any stab, stab, stabbing with, um, if there's a potential to hit bone when you do the stab, 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 uh, there is a potential to ride right up over that flipper tab. It is fairly minimal. It is rounded in just the right direction to make sure you slip right up on this very sharp, very well done. Um, I don't remember what the thickness was. It was uh, behind the edge. It was below 20 thousandths. Let's see. My caliper fingers are going to put it right at about 20 thousandths, guys. So it's going to slice you just like a paramilitary two would if you slip up on that blade. And they did an excellent job on this nice, fairly wide secondary bevel um, with the hollow grind behind it, fairly thin behind the edge. Um, this is a slicey grind on this blade profile, which you typically would not expect in such a narrow profile uh, with a, a moderately thick blade stock. That's probably 100 and, uh, 120 thousandths maybe. Um, I, you know, for $149, guys, I, I don't see anybody. Oh, we get a little purple right there. Did you guys see that purple? I just accidentally get it, and then when I try to come back and get it, I can't get it. This lighting is so white. You can see in the reflection, it is white, and it's a bright, guys, and I'm just using one bulb in each of my lights, and they're pointed straight up at the ceiling. They're not even pointed down at the table. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I could shoot a freaking movie in my living room um, if I had some naked women to do it with. Uh, I did. Yeah, okay. Naked women to do it with. All right, guys. Um, that's all we're going to talk about on this knife. I think it's time for Baz on Blades to go get a cold beer. Uh, if I'm talking about naked women on video, it's time to go get a cold beer. As always, I thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.